Okay, this is the second in this series about how to make a building more efficient. This would be commercial building. Uh, I've come up with a way to do this. Remember we had all the outside offices out there that were exposed to outside walls, had outside windows and that. And then we had the center in here that the only uh, uh, load on it would be a cooling load because there's no outside walls for the heat to go out. So it would always air condition or do nothing at all. Well, I've simplified this drawing because it would be incredibly complicated if I actually kept all those offices. And I've just got two units now. Now, the key to this thing is these are heat pumps. This is a heat pump in heat. This is a heat pump in cool. Okay, I have two piping systems. Hot water here goes through here, goes through a boiler, and is circulated back around through the pump. Okay, here is a cool piping. This piping goes through like that and comes back, and there's a pump that pumps it, and there's a cooling tower. Okay, if this system works properly, if it's working the way we want it to, the boiler will never come on. Water will just pass through it. Also, if everything's working perfectly, the cooling tower will never come on to cool off the water. So, here's what's happening. Here I've got, these are water source heat pumps. They're water-cooled condenser, water evaporator. And of course they reverse. This one's in cool. So it's going to take cold water off of this loop here. It's going to run it through the condenser, which is going to take and heat the water. That's the, the heat you took out of the structure. It's going to go into the water and it goes into this loop, warms the loop. Okay? As long as this is running, it's going to warm that loop. Okay. Down here I have another heat pump, just like the other one, but it's in heat. So what it's going to do is it's going to take that warm water that's cycling about here that has the heat that came off of this, it's going to run it through the evap, of this heat pump in heat, it's going to cool it off and it's going to run it into this cool pipe. So what happens here is I'm able to take the heat I pulled from out here and put it in this space here. Now the heat pumps, the heat pumps don't run for nothing. They cost money to run their compressor and stuff. but the neat thing about this system is the water source or the heat source or the rejection of heat is so close, let's say I have 80 degree water down here. Okay, I can't heat the structure with 80 degree water, it's too cold. Not enough temperature to do it. But if I run it through this pump and take that heat out and bring the temperature up to say 100, then I can heat that structure. I'm absorbing heat out of here, I'm just concentrating it to put it into the structure. And the heat pump is running at a very low compression ratio, meaning it doesn't have to change the temperature a whole lot. If it comes in at 80 and I'm sending it out at 100, it only has to change 20 degrees. And it's usually a little higher now, it's probably more like 110. But, and the same thing in the cooling. Because I'm bringing cool water in here to the condenser so that that heat that I gathered out of there is, is going into the condenser and being moved into the warm water loop. That's running at a very low compression ratio also. So these pumps are running at about the most efficient they can. They have a COP that's very high, coefficient of performance.
Um, I don't know what it is. It's got to be at least four. could be five. Uh, because the temperature difference is not very hot. That's the big deal with this. So this is a system that very possibly could run, let's say you have fairly cold winters, it could run most of the winter without ever firing up this boiler. Because the heat from the people and from the equipment, the electrical equipment and the like in there, is going to supply enough heat to heat the, uh, the outside office. Now, if it's high summer, everybody's going to be air conditioning here. And so the heat loop isn't going to do you any good. But the cooling tower, to cool off the water, is much more efficient than actually burning fossil fuels with a boiler. So this is a system that, while not perfect, has a lot of value in energy efficiency. One of the downsides of this is you're going to have 20 of these freaking heat pumps in this thing. Uh, I worked on one that got it. It must have had 40 on one floor. Uh, and they were doing the second floor when I was there. So you're going to have more mechanical failures in the pumps, just simply because there's more of them. But uh, it's a neat idea. In a, like I said, it's not new. It's been around forever. But you're taking the heat from one place in this building, concentrating it, and putting it in another. Now, would this be valuable in Florida? Eh, I don't think so. They don't heat much there. But if you're in some of the northern climates, it might be very good. Anyway, that's all on that thing.